Welcome back to the channel, and I'm here today with two great guitars under $1,000. The Sterling by Music Man version of the St. Vincent Goldie, and the brand new Paul Reed Smith SE NF3. Now, after playing the NF3 for a while, I realized something. These guitars might actually be each other's most direct competitor. Let me explain. The Goldie with a gig bag, I believe, is $829.99 in the United States, full retail. The NF3 is $799 with a gig bag. Both are made in Indonesia. Both have maple necks, rosewood fretboards, 22 frets, strat style trims. This one is a vintage a six screw. This one's a two point. Both have master volume, master tone, five way switch. And both have three unique humbucking, but smaller than full size humbucker pickups. The Goldie has three mini humbuckers, gold foil, though that's a cosmetic thing. And the NF3 has three of Paul Reed Smith's new narrow field deep dish humbuckers. These are specifically designed to sound more like a single coil. These are designed to sound like mini humbuckers. Also, turning over to the back, you can see they both have nicely rounded heel joints. Both have nice contours. These are actually, though the body shapes are different, two extremely similar guitars. The Paul Reed Smith has a three on each side headstock. The four and two Music Man design on the Goldie. Now, a couple of spec advantages the Goldie has. Though this is a beautiful maple neck, it's regular maple. This is roasted maple. Personally, I don't necessarily think that's a huge deal, but some people do. And locking tuners on the Goldie, non-locking PRS branded tuners on the NF3, which again, nice to have, not a huge deal to me. But then again, the Goldie is also $30 more. So what I'm gonna do is run through all the sounds on each guitar back and forth through uh, some different amps and uh, we'll just see how they sound compared to one another and what comes to mind. And also let me say too, both have what I would call C-shaped necks called the, uh, I apologize, I can't remember what the uh, name is for the Goldie. It's a slightly fuller C. This is the wide thin PRS neck, which is a slightly thinner C, but they're very similar. The Goldie's a little rounder and fuller, but not much. And also let me say, uh, this is a poplar body. This is Nyato, which both would be considered more affordable woods, but not a thing wrong with that on an electric guitar, especially at this price point, and especially when you have these beautiful metallic solid finishes. So, uh, yeah, let's see what these things can do and how they sound compared to one another. Going through a JHS Angry Charlie Distortion pedal into the Marshall DSL-1 head and a Black Star 2x12 cab, starting with the bridge pickup. Second position with the Angry Charlie and the Marshall. <laughs>
middle position with the Angry Charlie and the Marshall. <laughs> Fourth position with the Angry Charlie and the Marshall. Nick pick up with the angry Charlie and the Marshall. Okay, now let's get some clean sounds into a Vox AC-10, bass and treble both on five, volume and gain both on about three. <laughs>
Now we're going through the Vox AC-10, and before that, the MXR version of the Timmy for some overdrive sounds, starting on the bridge pickup. <laughs> I hope those sound samples were helpful. It's about what I expected. The Goldie is a little bit fuller and rounder sounding. The NF3 really does sound like a slightly warmer, fatter Strat, sort of in between the Gibson and Fender worlds. So final thoughts. Let me say that I have never done one of these comparisons in which I have been more impressed by the two guitars involved and their value. $800 full retail, 850. 
I found them both on scratch and dent slash B stock sales that I have never found, but the defect wasn't either for even less than that. And I just, the value is just amazing. These would stand toe to toe with any American production guitar in terms of quality. The fit and finish on both is amazing. It is truly remarkable that here in the middle of 2024, there are such amazing guitars being produced for under $1,000. And I wouldn't call these budget guitars. These would be mid-priced guitars in my opinion, but really, other than specific features and things like that, you can't do better than this, at least not without maybe spending a tremendous amount more money. Uh, I think that it really comes down to two things between these two guitars. Well, let me say three. This has a... I just absolutely love the neck on the NF3 so much. It reminds me so much of my 2011 American Standard uh, Strat, which is probably my favorite neck ever. It's a little bit wider in the shoulder, but otherwise so similar. And that's the white Strat you may have seen on this channel. Uh, this neck is a little rounder and fuller, though I'd call them both C-shaped. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Again, not better or worse, just different. This one, the NF3 neck, suits me slightly better Probably the biggest difference is the most obvious, and that is the body style. I and many others say the strap shape is the most comfortable shape of all, and not by a slim margin, by a wide margin. This is more comfortable for me to play, especially sitting down, but this has such a unique look, and it's very comfortable to play. So that's really just a matter of your own personal comfort and an aesthetic choice. Uh, probably the biggest one is the pickups. Again, this is a slightly warmer Strat. Ari Smith can say they sound just like single coils. Uh, they're a little warmer than single coils, but definitely have some of that Strat character. These mini humbuckers just sound amazing. Honestly, in most of the, but not all of the sound samples, I found myself preferring the sound of the Goldie. So, which one to pick? If I only had to pick one, that's extremely difficult to say. Um, I was hoping that one would really come out being the uh, winner here, uh, so perhaps I could sell the other one. But I love them both so much, I'm not saying I won't do that eventually, but I'm in no hurry to do it. And let me say too, another impressive thing is you can see by my sweat during these video clips, even though it gets hot where I live in the summer, it has been record-breaking hot recently. And this guitar would have just been shipped from Maryland, which is actually not very far away at all, but it would have come from Indonesia first. And, uh, but throughout these extreme temperatures, they have been extraordinarily tuning stable, both of these guitars. I'm really impressed by that in both of them. So, I mean, I, I would honestly have a very hard time. I love St. Vincent. She's one of my very favorite artists. Um, Olivia Rodrigo, who I think is an amazing, amazing artist, uh, who's much more than just another pop star, plays this version, though she definitely isn't huge pop star. Uh, well, I should say plays the American version of this, plays this general model. Um, of course, this is just, it's a Paul Reed Smith, even though it's an SE, it's still a PRS, and it feels every bit the quality of an American-made one. I mean, these are just amazing guitars, and it's an amazing time to be shopping in this price range. So, I can't make a specific recommendation as to either. You can't go wrong with either one. So another, uh, just as a brief aside, they talk about how unique these pickups are, but I'm looking over here at my Tele style guitar with the Joe Barden, uh, Danny Gatton pickups in it. And those are uh, humbuckers that are designed to sound like single coil. So even though it's a T style and an S style, that might be a future video because I think that would be very interesting because I can say that the Danny Gatton's definitely have a great single coil character. So again, you can't go wrong with either one is my ultimate conclusion. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Any comments, please let me know. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, keep on rocking.